What's going on? I'm FPL and Zaki. Welcome back to another video. Today, it's my Game Week preview video for Game Week 37, the penultimate Game Week of the season. And for many, it's the last chance that we have to make up ground in the overall rankings or in our mini leagues because it's the last double Game Week of the season. And in double Game Weeks, we often see the biggest rank rises and the biggest rank falls as well. So we want to make sure that we're making the best decisions that we can for our team this week. And the best decision you can make for your team right now is to hit that like button and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. I appreciate every single person who likes and subscribes to the channel. Let's start by having a look at the fixtures for the teams that double in 37 and also in 38. Manchester City, Manchester United, Brighton and Chelsea all double in 37. Starting off with City, they've got Chelsea at home and then Brighton away before playing Brentford away in game week 38. Now, if City beat Chelsea at home, they will be crowned champions before the Brighton game. And what we've seen from Pep in recent seasons is that once the league has been won, he will rotate his team quite significantly. So I think we can expect big rotation for the Brighton game before going full strength in 38 away to Brentford to build rhythm for the cup final. Manchester United have a very nice double. They played Bournemouth away, who are safe from relegation. Then they have Chelsea at home before in 38. Probably the best fixture of all in 38 is Fulham at home. Now Brighton, they've got Southampton at home, a relegated Southampton, and then potentially a rotated Manchester City. City for the second half of their double in 37. And then a difficult game with 38 fixture for Brighton, going away to Aston Villa, a team who have European ambitions and will be wanting to win that match. Chelsea, the worst double, easily the worst double here. They've got City away and United away, and then they will be hoping to upset Newcastle United's top four ambitions in game week 38. So those are the teams that double in 37, but which players should we be looking to bring into our team? Manchester United have Bournemouth, Chelsea, and Fulham to finish the season, and they just need to win two of those games to qualify for the Champions League. Looking at United's attacking stats, thanks to Opta, across the season, United have struggled to score goals. Their 43 goals from open play from an XG of 48 is an underperformance of five, which is on par with the likes of West Ham, Everton, Chelsea, and Southampton as one of the worst in the league. So United aren't struggling to create chances, but they are struggling to convert them. It's a clear indication that the side is lacking a clinical goal scorer. Defensively, United are top for clean sheets and third for goals conceded this season, but there's a big difference between their defensive performances at home versus away. United have kept 11 clean sheets in their last 14 games at home, including six in a row now. And the good news is that two of their final three matches are at Old Trafford. So the season stats are suggesting that it's defensive assets rather than attacking ones we should be looking to buy. Looking at the individual player stats across the season, Bruno Fernandes leads the way with an XGI of 17.53. It's been a tale of two seasons for Bruno. Prior to the World Cup, he only delivered four attacking returns, but since then, he's registered 11 attacking attacking returns in just 21 matches. So Bruno looks like a great pick if you don't already have him. There's some doubt around Rashford's fitness for 37. We'll have to wait for Ten Hag's press conference before making a decision on whether to keep or sell him. If Ten Hag says that Rashford is out or a doubt for 37, I've got no doubts in my mind that I would be selling him. There's no point holding on to Rashford when there's only two game weeks left in the season, if he's a doubt or going to miss game week 37. A few people talking about Anthony as their Rashford replacement, but I don't like that move at all. Anthony scored four goals from something like 68 shots this season and an XG of 6.39, suggesting that he's a wasteful finisher. And that's exactly what you see when you watch him play. He takes a lot of low XG shots 
and he's also guilty of missing chances that you'd expect him to score. He's terrible for bonus two because his shots are often off target and he misses big chances. The benefit of Anthony, I guess, is that his minutes are more secure than the likes of Sancho and Garnacho, though. So that's something to keep in mind. Martial is an interesting punt up front. His minutes per expected goal involvement is better than any other United player, but it's a question of will he get a start and how many of those will he get in the next three fixtures. I think we're probably going to get two starts from Martial, and that's if he doesn't pick up an injury in the meantime. Defensively, the two best assets are De Gea and Shaw. Making a goalkeeper change at this stage of the season, though, feels like really low upside. Luke Shaw has moved back to left back in that game against Wolves. He looked really good from an attacking perspective. Whether it's centre back or left back, Luke Shaw is the best defensive asset to have. So if I was ranking the United assets in order from best to worst, this is how I would rank them. Bruno Fernandes, number one, Rashford, two, Shaw, three, Martial, four, Anthony, five, and then Varane at six. We can't talk about Manchester City players at the moment without talking about Pep Roulette in the final three games of the season. There's a fantastic article on Fantasy Football Scout. I'll put it in the comment section below that details what Pep has done with his squad rotation in the final few matches of each of the last Premier League seasons. When the title has been won, what does he do? When they're still fighting for the title, when they've got a Champions League or a Cup final to come after 38, what does he do with his squad then? It's really, really helpful, that article. The article highlights that Pep has a tendency to rotate heavily once the title has been won, but will go full strength in game week 38 for rhythm ahead of a cup or Champions League final, which City have two of this season. So noting all of this, I think that we can expect City to be largely full strength against Chelsea, win the league, depending what happens in the Champions League, but go full strength against Chelsea, win the league, and then big rotation against Brighton for the second half of the double, and then to go full strength against Brentford in game week 38. FBL Review orders the City players based on their expected points for the remainder of the season. You can see that here on screen. I've got some concerns about De Bruyne, though. I wouldn't sell Salah for KDB, as some people are looking to do. De Bruyne looked knackered after the first leg against Madrid, and he unsurprisingly missed that game against Everton in game week 36. So if the second leg of the Champions League is punishing on KDB, I think that there's a chance he could miss Chelsea in game week 37 because Pep does not want to lose him for the FA Cup or the Champions League final. Mares, he's got explosive potential and if he's benched in the Champions League, he could be good for game week 37. But the issue with Mares is that he's also got Bernardo Silva and Foden competing for that right wing spot. So even if he's benched in the Champions League, you cannot guarantee that he'll start in the league. Grealish, he's got high ownership, but will surely start in the Madrid match because he's part of City's best 11. But he doesn't feel as explosive as Mares or Alvarez, so I don't think that I would be buying Grealish now. A lot of managers have already bought Gundogan in after scoring four goals in the last two games. He's kind of reminding us of that Gundogan from a couple of seasons ago. If Rashford is out this week, Rashford to Gundogan does make a lot of sense, but with Gundogan's age, his injury history, and how crucial he is to City's best 11. Again, people want him for that Champions League and FA Cup fixture. So I, I think we might see Gundogan start Chelsea, rested for Brighton, and then probably start in game week 38. Personally, I think I prefer Mares or even KDB over Gundogan in midfield. Edison, he's another player at risk of rotation. Pep has rotated his goalkeepers in this stage of the season on many occasions. I think Ortega or Carson will get at least one match. And likely when the title has been wrapped up against Brighton, that second half of 37. From the defenders, Diaz is the most nailed. So if you wanted to buy one, I would go there. Otherwise, you can chase the upside with stones. Personally, I'm looking at Alvarez. I don't think he starts all three. I think he gets two out of the next three, but if Pep does decide to rotate, it should suit Alvarez. Also, if KDB is a doubt, that should suit Alvarez as well. I think we get two out of three starts, as I said, for Alvarez in the run-in. And for six mil, with the upside that he offers, I'm happy to take a chance on that. So if I was ordering the City assets, it would go like this. Haaland, number one. Mares number two. KDB, three. Gundogan 4, Alvarez 5, Diaz 6, and then John Stones gets in there at number 7. 
Let's take a look at the best captaincy options for game week 37. City have a double, which makes Haaland the best pick for the armband. It's hard to look past Haaland at this stage. As I said before, Pep has a track record of heavily rotating once they've won the league. I think Haaland starts against Chelsea, but if they've won the match, but if they win that match and win the league, could he be benched for Brighton? Is there a chance that Haaland gets benched for Brighton? There's a possibility. We haven't seen Haaland rested really at all this season, so there's no precedent for that. But they've not won the league before yet this season, so it's hard to draw parallels there. If the league's wrapped up, what we've seen from Pep in the past is that he has massively rotated, and Haaland could be a victim of that. So maybe there is an opportunity to go against Haaland this week. And if he were going to go against Haaland, it would be with Bruno Fernandes. He's guaranteed to start and play 90 minutes in both. Bournemouth and Chelsea are two better fixtures than what Haaland has. And there's a small concern around Haaland's minutes. I think you could justify Bruno over Haaland if you wanted to make up ground. I'd probably go Bruno over Haaland. It's a Hail Mary, but there's only two game weeks left, so you have to go for that if you want. And De Bruyne, he's a great option for the armband, but his minutes are a big risk. He'll surely start the Madrid second leg, and then we might see him rested for Chelsea. So similarly, I think Rashford's a great option, but we have to wait on the update from Ten Hag in the press conference. But if you don't want to go for Haaland, I think the next best is to go for Bruno Fernandes. Looking at the clean sheet odds, we don't have the goal scorer odds yet, thanks to check the chance, but we've got the clean sheet odds. Great odds for a City clean sheet this game week at 64%. But which defenders will start twice? Probably Diaz, maybe a Kanji. Even Edison isn't guaranteed two starts. It's probably the Chelsea fixture, which you'd expect a clean sheet in for City rather than the Brighton match, which sounds surprising. But given Chelsea's struggles this season, it's not really that surprising. United at 58% seems quite low to me. They've kept six clean sheets in a row at Old Trafford, facing a poor Chelsea side and a Bournemouth team who are safe from relegation. And as I've said before, they lost their last two matches since safety was guaranteed. Brighton have a mixed double. Southampton at home, that looks like a great chance of a clean sheet before they host City. And apart from these three, clean sheet prospects don't look too great this week. Newcastle host a Leicester team who are playing for their lives and Newcastle obviously going for the top four. I think there'll be lots of goals in that game. I just don't see a clean sheet for either side. Liverpool at 35% for a clean sheet, as we've seen with Trent recently. He's a player that you do not want to bench. He's got potential for goals, assists, and clean sheets. And Chelsea are the final team with a double game week, but are given just a 17% chance of a clean sheet. The double City away, United away is probably as difficult as it gets. That's it for today's video. Make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe as well. I'll be back later in the week for my team reveal video with my transfers and where my rank is now ahead of game week 37. So make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment in the comment section below as well. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.